Gather veterans, it's time to join the fight. The long war begins. This is The Long War. I'm Robbie B. And joining me once again are my partners in crime, Kenny Boucher, Mike Caswell, and Wyatt Turk from Jacket Clothes Painting. What's up, guys? Yo, dog, great to be here. Hail and well met. Hail, you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this is our this is our new Rona format, I guess. Uh, stick around till the end; it, it gets it gets spicy. Uh, Kenny's gonna splice it all together. I don't know how he does his wizardry, but uh, I don't do as much as you think I do, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I cut some shit, move some shit around, delete some dead space, listen to some jokes that didn't land, start laughing at our own jokes too much, cut that out, <laughs> you know. But basically, you know, just going through this crisis. The podcast is kind of more like a traditional podcast, less formulaic, uh, less newsy, segmenty. Uh, you know, there's a lot going on in the world, and we're going to talk about a lot of different things. This episode, we did touch on some really awesome 40K news and some meta stuff. So obviously, that's sort of meat and potatoes. He's not really a table contest. It's not formatted that way. But we are going to maintain a couple of our norms. We are going to do our tabletop Marketplace for Rob, aka Nerd Shit, and to Wyatt, real quick, give us a would you rather. Would you rather be the greatest golf player of all time or the weakest Avenger? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Who is the weakest Avenger? I mean, definitely Hawkeye. Probably like Snowflake. Or safe space. Safe oh space. yes, those are real. I forgot. Those are actually canon. <laughs> oh, we're not yeah. talking movie Avengers. We're talking like comic that's book Avengers. Now. Yeah. So Dude, I, there's I like, like oh, like that's so girl. many. So I actually got to be weaker than them, not just Hawkeye. Yeah, I can't. You're like I, you're like that guy. I can't remember his name now. Who joined X Force? That just like walked in. He had no power. The guy oh, like Peter. Peter. <laughs> Peter. Peter. <laughs> Yeah. So I was like, if I'm 1% weaker than Hawkeye, I'm still from pretty badass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, True. exactly. But, like we could, or Ant-Man. Well, maybe nah, Ant-Man. Because I would just pick that. I'll pick it. I'm picking weakest Avengers. I had I had to go hard because everybody would just be like, but Hawkeye is so cool. No, mm, we got to go. Kinda, we got to go hard. Movie Hawkeye is a deadly assassin. If I'm 1% less badass than him, I can take it. But not I'm going to have to go with best golfer. Yeah, I'm going with best golfer because at least I'll be rich. So... See, so like, yeah. so let's let's just say that it's like Hawkeye is the weakest Avenger, right? How much does, does Hawkeye get paid? How much does he get paid? See, I probably also, not as much as the greatest golfer. Yeah, of Tiger all time Woods now. level golfing. I'm kind of thinking I could brand that, especially if like I'm the way I am now, like this hillbilly, this Florida man, <laughs> Gator husbandry guy, and I go out there and I'm just crushing these dudes in the PGA Tour, bro. I'm gonna get paid, son. I'm taking golfer. Yeah. Golfer, I think so either, and not because not because it's an easy win, because I can't smell or and or taste, and maybe that's have, your superpower. I have that's your issues. Superpower. What? So you're exactly as you are now, but an Avenger. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the movie, <laughs> it, everything's falling apart, and they're just like, "Yo, this is this is they've they've done this thing. They've put they've put the last Infinity Stone in one of three bowls that that is made out of the most bitter." Um, fluid that it, it'll kill normal people. And then Rob goes, I can't taste. Yeah. I can drink all three bowls. I'm also an Don't. immortal lizard person. Yeah. So Boom. that helps too. Yeah. I got the last infinity stone. <laughs> exactly as you are now. So Rob would be an immortal lizard person yeah. with no taste, with no sense of smell. Huh. Nice. Yeah. And let me just say. I still pick a golfer. Yeah, me too. Me Unless say, that superpower thing. Oh, well, yeah. I mean. Like I'm thinking of Happy Gilmore now. Like I mean, he got paid to do that, didn't he? Yeah. He got, oh yeah. He Happy Gilmore paid. got mad money. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Get paid, son. Our guy doesn't get paid, mm-hmm. or at least doesn't get paid enough. <laughs> I'd rather be overpaid. Fucking <laughs> uh, Rob, we're gonna we can we can pivot into tabletop marketplace, but I just sure. want to take this moment to tell you that I think you look real handsome today, man. <laughs> do i have a booger 
No, I'm just like, I'm just looking at you in the screen. Like I got this huge screen I'm looking at now because we're doing the Zoom call and now you're in HD for my, like, I don't normally see you in HD. I'm like, whatever you're doing, whatever you're, however you're reverse aging, maybe you got a new skin suit. Maybe you molted. I don't know what you did. (laughs) Maybe you molted. (laughs) I have been outside. I've been hobbying outside because I hate being at the computer all the time. I've been using my chain weapons. (laughs) Oh, dude! Somebody just brought up a plot hole with the uh, with the "Would you rather?" What's that? Hawkeye shot an eighteen on eighteen. He doesn't miss ever. It's true. <laughs> Hawkeye is at the same time the greatest. The- <laughs> it's a question. Hawkeye is no. the greatest golfer. Boom. All right, whoever posted that, you have beaten the genie. You, Man. <laughs> you got a guy. You get a, you get a free non consequence wish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rob, do it. Give us some news. Um, GW's opening to, if you hear this, for us it's tomorrow, but for the rest of you, it's May 7th, a Thursday, in the US, Italy, Canada, which technically counts as the US because it's the same warehouse and Australia and New Zealand. So all the web stores are going to be open. Now, if you want that super sweet Catachan kernel model, it turns out GW has already shipped them out to some stores in the US. They have arrived and they're going for like three to $500 on eBay because each what? store only got two to four of them. Which again, if you I was- You said you were going to light them up if this happened to so sell, light them up. If I was Games Workshop- Light them up. I would not be doing things like this because not only does it create a feel badsy for stores because so many people want this miniature and they can easily sell them for 30 to $35 each and make, you know, if they got their normal allocation of 20 to 30 of these, make a cool G. Instead, they got to pick favorites on their customers on who can get them and potentially lose out on money that they could be selling them for on the secondary market, getting three to $500 when that would pay somebody's rent right now. So why Games Workshop? Why, 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 why did you do this? I, I, what? Go harder. I want you to, I I just don't, I just don't get why Games Workshop would, would only give stores so many, no instruction on if they can order more, if they will be honored, but yet on their site, they're selling made to order miniatures, plastic miniatures, the sister, the Terminator and the captain from Adepticon a year ago to be fulfilled in 160 or 120 days. Because it, it fuck makes, you, that's why. It makes no sense. It creates so many feel badsies. They try to act like they're doing something cool and they're really just creating a lot of feel badsies. And it's it's just like, it's like, who is driving the ship right now, guys? Like, what are you doing? It's so effed up right now. I spoke with a number of store owners that got theirs in today. And I'm just like, well, what are you going to do? He's like, what do you think I should do? And I was like, dog, you could pay your rent with that. Like, I, I would, would sell that on eBay. On. That's what you do, motherfucker. I like, would say I didn't get none and just sell it on eBay, bro. And keep your store open for another. Month. I just like, straight talk, motherfucker. Anybody's like, yo, you got those models? Nope. Sold them on eBay. I <laughs> like, I'm I not going to lie. I'm like, I told a couple of store owners. I was like, look, if it's going for 300 bucks, I'll buy one for me for 300 bucks because I'm going to do a video on it and it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I'll pay that money and you can you, you please know, in your video indicate that you also purchased it for three hundred dollars. Oh, hundred percent. Thank you. Yeah. God damn it. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. You're the hero we deserve on me. I don't know, man. <laughs> this is you already told me you're gonna give me I, one. I'm gonna hold you to it. Uh, the, the, right. the, there's a lot of evolution to that discussion, clearly. <laughs> yeah, things things have gone slightly so- sideways since then. So I think what they should do is you know, uh, walk it back a little bit and be like, Hey stores, you can order. We'll honor whatever you put in, but it's going to be made to order. It's going to be 160, 180 days, whatever. And we got you like, sell it now. We're just going to give you these things. It's all good. And that way the stores can sell their 30. They can pay their rent for the month or whatever. And everybody's happy and there isn't people spending three hundred dollars on a minute. Good job eBay. offering a solution, you know, like that was that was professional of you, Rob. But in this video you create, can I make the thumbnail? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not one of those chasing the algorithm videos. I like, want it's gonna be a I'm just gonna GW's new plastic model, three hundred dollars extortion and like oh, no, a picture it, of no, Rob no, not B. extortion. It just needs to be the miniature, my stupid face, and an arrow. I paid three hundred dollars for this. Boom. 
or something like that. All right, then you're going to give it to me. Got it. I do have something to send you. Do you still need that Dreadnought? I need a Ragnar like, Black Man. I mean, I need a like a Dreadnought. I need an Impulsor. I need that Catachan officer. I kind of I need like a third edition Iron Warriors army. <laughs> that's, that's not happening. <laughs> I need uh, one of those too. Um, also, uh, so what I imagine is going to be happening. I do have a Ragnar. Um, I, I think get, what's going to happen. I suck your dick for that Ragnar, or give you three hundred dollars. Uh, you don't have to do either of those things. <laughs> what I, want to, I wasn't going to point. anyway. Okay. Uh, I have that camera to send you to, by the way. Anyways, I just want to make sure you guys still wanted that stuff before I send it. The the thing that's that's going to happen, uh, I think GW is going to try to ramp up operations because they kind of uh, out of nowhere was like, hey, we're shipping this stuff. And they didn't make an official announcement to the in the U.S. And now they're coming out the gate. They're like, by the way, tomorrow everything's opening. So I really see the potential here for them to be opening up the floodgates. We're already seeing previews this week on Engine War. I have a strong suspicion Engine War is going to hit maybe back to back with um, War of the Spider. I also think we're going to probably get the Lumineth Realm Lords box this this month as well, the limited edition starter box to kick things off because they're doing a preview for that too. So I think I think it's going to be business getting back to business as usual very soon for them here in May, so they can you know hit their. They already said they went on record. They said, "Hey, we're going to have a profit of seventy million euro or seventy excuse me seventy million Great Britain pounds this year." Um. They got to get there. And I don't, we don't know where they're at right now, but they got three weeks to do it. <laughs> Maybe GW should start listing their plastics for $300 on eBay. Hmm. Mm-mm-mm. That would be something. <laughs> so there are some new rules for engine war. Nothing, nothing too. I mean, there's some decent looking stuff, but we don't, we don't have enough context to really make some opinions. There's some five shot fly, uh, flying dudes that look cool, but we don't know strength of weapons. Um, so there's, there's going to be some stuff coming out. We're going to see more, but we just don't have enough right now to really kind of get any sort of picture on, on, uh, the new Admax stuff whatsoever, but it all looks dope. That's for sure. Um, release wise, there's still, you know, we still got plenty of time uh, for stuff to come out here in this month. There's a lot of Kickstarters. We kind of ran them down last week. Nothing too awful new this week. Although I know, towards the 15th next next week we'll probably have a list of some new ones coming out uh, to support because there's a towards the middle of the month uh, is a good time to launch a kickstarter and there's going to be a lot of those coming out so i'm sure we'll see some cool hobby stuff uh next week so kind of stay tuned for all of that hell yeah well i mentioned earlier we were only gonna do this but i forgot mike haspel has a big announcement for the uh, umber case files we mentioned it in the after hours version but I feel like you need to do a Haspel's corner right now and catch everyone. Yeah, up. Sh- sure. So I have like a Facebook group, and I'll put a I'll put a link in the Long War Network thing because I it's called uh, Umbra Operatives uh, Facebook group, and I'm going to be releasing a new Umbra case file, uh, basically a short story. It, this one does not have to do with uh, Alex and Marcus, but some other people, some other characters you'll get introduced to, um, and I will be dropping that probably tomorrow. I was going to do it tonight, but I want to reread it tonight and format it because I know Facebook is going to jack up the formatting. <laughs> so mm-hmm. uh, I want to make sure everything is is the is good so that I I, uh, I can just put it out, you know. Um, but it it should other folks who have read it already have really enjoyed it. So uh, you you guys will get that because the rest of everything is kind of on hold right now for publishing. Hmm. I'm stoked. And I think that a lot of people are going to love this. Mm-hmm. Congratulations on getting that, that, that accomplished. And that's fucking yeah. awesome, man. Completing. I know completing stories is a big deal. Like living with a writer myself. <laughs> so that's fucking awesome, bro. Yeah. It's it. I wrote it in, uh, in record time too. I originally wrote it in like four days for the first draft. Sick. I like burn through that for me. That's very, very quick. Other people like, you know, be like, Shaw, that was a day. You know, I'm like, no, not for me. <laughs> that, was, that was just a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Well, fuck yeah, dude. Um, hype on that. Uh, I do have an update. Uh, 
we should discuss, Rob, did you get the information? This is to anyone who supports like any of us on various Patreon platforms. Oh, about taxes? Taxes. Um, so yeah, I dug into it quite a bit. They're gonna roll they're gonna roll out more information. I think this is just like keep, keeping us aware. So we're gonna be able to kind of mitigate it, it looks like, mm-hmm. with um some keywords. So things like streaming or free accesses don't get taxed as much. Yeah. Um, Basically sales it's, it's sales, it's sales tax and it's that. And yeah. what's, what's upsetting about it is it's like, it's legislation. They can't stop it. And it's on the supporter side based on your region. And right. a lot of it's going to default to like, if you offer rewards for tiers, it's going to probably auto select, like that's a $20 tier. Therefore you're going to get sales tax on $20, things like that. And so we're going to have the ability to go in there and like, clarify what these things like yo a postcard isn't worth 20 bucks you know what i'm saying so uh july 1st i believe is when they said the yeah and they're going to talk about it more by the end of this month so we can change the tiers up a little bit yeah we're gonna do wise. everything we can to to mm-hmm. not to mitigate this because like I hate hidden charges, and this one is this one doesn't come. Last time something like this happened with Patreon, experimented with the uh, Stripe uh, payment, yeah. and it was such big backlash. They actually said, "Okay, we heard you. We're not doing it." So this one they can't do that too. So like, just making everyone aware. Lots of people support us on Patreon to help us pay our fucking rent, especially in these times. We're gonna do our absolute best across all platforms to make sure that you are shielded from as much of this new sales tag bullshit as possible. I think some of the lower tiers, you know on both of our platforms or most of our platforms will be able to kind of be mitigated, but on some of the higher stuff, like if you're, you know, getting physical goods, like we have a $200 tier, like it's physical goods. Yeah. Um, but what they're saying is that the sales tax rates, you know, are 4% to 11%. So you're basically talking to every $5, that's 20 cents to 55 cents. Yeah, especially you know? like, I mean, I have a, I have a hundred dollars here and like you get a bunch of stuff, but also I sent you a postcard. It's in there. It's benefits track. So like currently that postcard, you would owe a sales tax on a hundred dollars. Like until I'm able to get into the guts and fix things. Right. So, so like that's, I think- that's, that's, that's the, they're, they're making us aware so we can get on our game. So you guys don't get these mm-hmm. charges. So, yeah, we don't we don't want any of that for sure. Um, so I think, you know, we'll definitely be working on it as best we can to uh, to make it to make yeah. it good. But just something that to be aware public of. Public service announcement sure. too to anybody who is a pay, Patreon content creator in the miniature web space who hasn't received that email yet, because I don't think everyone's got it yet. Oh, really? So I just want everyone to know supporters and creators alike. Like this is, you know, this community is holding itself together. There's more content creators now than I've ever seen before. A lot of people jumping on a lot of new faces doing amazing content. This is a crazy, exciting time in many ways for how uh, the live streaming uh, works. And so just don't want anyone mm. to get caught off guard by this shit. Yeah, um, I think I think that's definitely good to, to, to mention. A lot of a lot of online sub stuff is up because, you know, folks are just like looking for something to do and consume mm-hmm. that content, you know, the way the way that they want now. So it's a it's a really exciting time for content creators. Um Speaking of yeah, which, just, when, when are you turning back? Uh, when are you turning Patreon back on, Mike? Uh, I actually took my whole page down. I know. I clicked on it today. <laughs> Very disappointing to discover that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, probably after this COVID thing. Um, I mean, now that you're putting out your stories, bro, like, like yeah, I want yeah. you to take my money. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I know. I know. I need to get it. I need to revamp it. That's why I took it down was because I needed to change like all the tiers and everything like that and everything. I'm, uh, I, Cause I think I'm going to go to like a tier list model. So. Oh, like a per chat, like a, Oh, I love that. But yeah, you, there like needs to be some type per, of tier though, where I can pay you to print off the short story and sign it like on a right, on right, crude, yeah. on crude uh, office max paper. <laughs> and then, then tape yeah. it together with dollars complete with a coffee stain yeah, and i want to oh, fuck yeah i'll pay extra for the coffee stain <laughs> custom custom bro. yeah sure like hell yeah um anything else guys before we jump into the meat and potatoes uh uh all, aka insanity that was the podcast that we just recorded what a shit show <laughs> some nuggets in there guys and that was that was quality content. I don't know what you're talking about. Quality. 
<laughs> yeah, it was good. Did you say quality? No. Quality. No. <laughs> All right. Well, without further ado, the mean potatoes. In space, no one can hear you scream unless it is the battle cry of the Astra Militarum. Let me hear your war cry. We're here. Uh, you were you were saying, Mike, that you're outside of Servo Skull, which is a pretty cushy job in the 41st millennium. Yeah. Your, your next pick? <laughs> My next pick of what I could realistically do, like realistically pull off, is maybe be an enforcer or like in a Necromunda game. Maybe. Like a, like a coppa. But, but I'm thinking an enforcer because I would be I would be that dirty cop that everyone pays off <laughs> so that the enforcers don't come like roust your crap. I would be that guy. I thought you'd be like, be oh, like, man, uh, it's Haspel again. I already paid you last week. Yeah, well, you're going to pay me this week. Or some of my bigger, stronger friends might come by and, and then I'd like smash a guy's kneecap just for talking back to me. <laughs> hate, hate to, you know. <laughs> Hate to have to mention this place. To, yeah, I hate to have to mention this, and you know, oh, you know, you be, want to do the paperwork. And yeah, and be, then the next time you talk back to me, I guess this whole place is not getting their allotment of corpse corpse starch. Enjoy starving. <laughs> you would be the grim dark, the grim dark episode of the Shield. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I mean, like realistically, like Servo Skull is like what I hope I get to be because I'm gonna be a fucking manufactorum slave or some shit like. <laughs> Probably, or just like Circle one of those school. drag addicts in the hive cities. That could be that too. <laughs> but servo skills get to fly. So I mean, that. yo, you literally get to fly, dude. Like you're right. So. I want to be one of the dudes that like get to target the volcano cans on a Titan, like hardwired in. Yeah. Just I'm just that guy that was like, oh yeah, I used to be a guardsman like you once. <laughs> That's right. Until I, I just took like an arrow to the knee. Until I, yeah, I took I took a like a last round to the to the back. <laughs> hmm. uh, Shout out to the chat, Sammy from YouTube, Andy. About ninety nine ninjas. What up? <laughs> yeah, uh, Disflux says he always imagined corpse starch looked like scrambled eggs. I think it looks exactly like the stuff that they that they um, eat in the Matrix. When oh, Mouse oh. says that it it tastes like tasty weed or whatever, and then they're like, "How do you know what what it, what tasty weed tasted like?" Uh, I think that's what it looks like. Gross. Yeah, I, I was thinking like the uh, have you ever seen the Snowpiercer? Yep, the uh, have, protein have, like, bricks made of like cockroaches. Yeah, that's that's what I thought that most mm. like low hive people would eat. Well, it's not like it's getting brought in. It's pretty much there and no, they it's have getting to, recycled. Yeah, yeah, just recycle people. That I mean, that that could be a job I would do in 40K. I'd be like that guy who walks around and pokes out your dude. <laughs> like, oh, no, that guy's still breathing. No, this guy's dead. He goes on the cart. God damn. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. He's tomorrow's dinner. <laughs> and there's rats. You got to fight off the rats that are bigger than dogs. That the the underhive people like skin and wear their pelts. Probably have like cybernetic implants for some reason. Like, why the fuck does that giant rat have a laser eye? Because what? there's some psycho uh, Rick, mad scientist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's like hundreds of them rats. in every block. <laughs> that's Unlicensed how portal fluid. What the fuck? Yeah. What are they? What are they eating to get that big? That's, that's how the he real practices. Question. He 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 practices his prosthetics on these rats and just lets them. Do you ever think about uh, like in 40k the narrative of like you're playing up against Tyranids and you got all you know the like God Swarm pretty basic model whatever but have you ever really like thought like what it would be like to be a guardsman standing across from just a single panther sized cockroach? <laughs> yeah, it'd be terrifying. It would because be... if you if you want to bring real science into it, if you were to scale a cockroach up to that size. They, like snap you in half like it was nothing yeah mm. the way they're like their strength to body ratio weight works but but yeah, here's the clincher that. that guardman's that guardsman would not be afraid because if he's a good guardsman he's read the regimental standard that tells him that all these tyranids are just inferior and alaska will just blow them up like no sweat so yeah. he's gonna charge right in there that's like chapter three in the imperial Humans <laughs> uplifting primer now, what happens is the the rear guy in his platoon who saw the other like 16 dudes just get freaking eviscerated. 
<laughs> one, one of like to this day, one of my favorite things from the the Imperial Infantryman's Uplifting Primer is the casualty cards. And any, any, like Mike probably knows these, and anybody else in the chat who's a vet will will know about what casualty cards are. And my favorite thing is like scroll away in a little corner of it because it's like it's like if this mark them this way, like if they if they have like a flesh wound in like the chest, like mark it, and like and they have like um like trauma response based on level of injury, right? And then it, off in the corner, really small print, and it's like if exposed to a psychic uh, event, like kill them immediately like there is no <laughs> there is no like trauma like there's no counseling there's no quarantine it's like if they are if they came into contact with any kind of psychic anything like kill them immediately yep yeah checks oh, out goodness checks out earlier um we were in our pre-live scream uh my castle was getting hype on the hathio bjornson eddie hall boxy match <laughs> oh he was actually highly concerned for their safety. I I am because those guys don't they don't understand pain on the same They're level not. as we do and they have will powers that are supernatural frankly and so they will put them you know they they could actually injure each other to the where somebody where a normal boxer would be like okay look that I'm injured not just hurt I'm injured like I need to stop. They're not going to stop. Yep. There's a degree of willpower too in boxing rules because boxing, you have a standing eight count, 10 counts, you know, depending on what they decide the rules are, how many times you, how many eight counts in the round, maybe you can't get saved by the bell. There's all these rules in boxing that really on the surface look helpful, but those are the combat sport elements of the, of the, of it that are actually kind of bad in the long run. Like anytime you get your bell rung and you've had eight seconds to get your shit back together, you can hype yourself up. You know, those guys are real good at that, you know, mm-hmm. and, all that does is put you back in there to get that concussive connective tissue damage over and over again. I predict, like we talked about, that it's not going to be professional fights going to have headgear, 16-ounce gloves. So I hope that's the case and they're at least able to be reasonable about this because – and even then, that might be even worse. It's almost better to just go bare knuckle and just like – because then you have to kind of punch <laughs> half power – like, like, I mean, I am concerned. Yeah, like, you talk about like, a dude who's six eight, six nine, who just deadlifted yeah. eleven hundred pounds versus Eddie Hall, who yeah. trains boxing, who was also a world star. They have like, a year and a half to prep. Uh, oh my god! Mm. But I hope they get paid. I hope they get yeah. his aid. They they would. I would hire uh, Conor McGregor <laughs> <laughs> as a hype man. <laughs> I hope Hathor Bjornsson goes and trains with Conor McGregor because there's that old video of him working out with Conor McGregor that one time. Yeah, because just get that hype. These guys deserve millions. Yeah. What's my opinion (laughs) about uh, Taika Waititi doing a Star Wars movie? Oh, I Uh, am hyped. I am cautiously. Well, here's the thing is I know, and I told Wyatt this already. I know I'm no longer a Star Wars fan because of that announcement. And it's not because I, I love Taika and I, I really like Jojo Rabbit. Like that, I, that was a fantastic movie. And of course, The Last Thor was great. Thor Ragnarok, incredible. Also, but his, my, all, all of his shit is pretty funny. All of his shit. Mm. Uh, the, uh, what we do in the dark. I love all that, that stuff. Show. It's great. I mean, he, right? he directed episodes of The Mandalorian. Um, yep. I mean, but, like all the people they brought together on that knocked it out of the park. But, but here's how I know I'm no longer a Star Wars fan. Is that when they announced Taika Waititi, I, I'm self-aware enough to go, man, I should be 100% hype about this. I should be like, yes, this is going to be awesome. Star Wars is back online. And instead, what I was like, oh, good for him. <laughs> that's, that's how I felt. And so I was just like, oh. And there's been moments like that. That's not the first moment that happened. That when um, the Star Wars land, Galaxy's Edge, when my brother... My brother sent me, I collect replica movie props. I I make them, I collect them. My basement is full of like artifacts from all these different films. Oh, we need to to touch on that later for the different discussion, but continue. Okay. Uh And a ton of them are Star Wars related, right? I have a full size Han Solo and Carbonite in my basement. So my brother is all hype and he goes, man, Galaxy's Edge is selling all this stuff. You can only get back at Galaxy's Edge. Like they have holocrons. They have this. They have this. They have this. And I was just cards. Right. You have a set now, right? 
I did get a set of Sabat yeah. cards, but I, but I essentially, I should have been hyped through the roof. I should have been like, Oh my God, I'm going to spend like a billion dollars getting holocrons and all this crap. <laughs> and instead I was just like, Oh, they have Sabat cards. Yeah. And it was, and then I was like, Oh, I'm not a star Wars fan anymore because I should have been hyped through the roof. And that's how I felt about Taika was, I was like, man, you know, I should be way more excited than I am. But instead I was just like, well, that'll be good for his career. That's good for him. I like him. Yeah. I mean, instead he's, of, he's really competent. Yeah. Instead of going, I can't wait to see his movie. I thought, well, that'll be good for his career. <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, ah, the relationship is over. The magic is lost. Time to move Oof. on to somebody 20 years younger. Taika. Love him. <laughs> for, for science somebody should clip that and then when that movie inevitably comes out we'll have to like play, yeah play it back uh mike into actually seeing it like we'll have to shanghai him and tie him up and take him to a theater and we'll see what his reaction is see if see if uh he changed his mind well dude that's exactly if it's anything happened. like ragnarok though like because thor ragnarok was the most it was my favorite marvel movie to it date. was so good like and so i am i hope he but you know, it's there's so much more to the picture than just having a good director. You know. Until Endgame, Thor Ragnarok had my favorite scene in um in a Marvel movie ever. And it was the immigrant song scene. <laughs> yes. And when mm-hmm. when that happened, I had to become like I was not in my body. I had an out of body. <laughs> it was so I mean, just like some of the quotes and everything, like are you the God of Hammers, or are you the God of Thunder? That was yeah, when he said that, I was like, oh, shit's about to get real. And then you have Galadriel go, what were you the god of again? I'm like, you're about to get, you're about to get <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, so Led good. Zeppelin on top of all that. And wow. then the entire movie looked like 80s yeah. heavy metal albums. I was, was just amazing. like, I'm done. It looked I'm like done. the cover of, of like the old heavy metal magazines. Like every, yeah. every scene. I was like, I was so hyped. I was like, out oh, of body so experience good. right now. Even the what, casting was amazing, too. Like, Kate Blanchett as Hella, where it's just like when you get somebody who's good at playing evil characters, where they mm-hmm. like they're just they enjoy being evil to the point of like this is this is fun for me. Like those are the best villains. Yeah, so, well, and especially like um, even the the when you have Loki and Thor together, and like Thor has this sort of like exasperation with Loki's antics at this point. But yeah. then, like, they immediately fall into that, like, brother routine of, like, <laughs> oh, let's do the thing. And he's like, no, I hate the thing. It's so dumb. <laughs> well, what I really liked about Kate Blanchett's Hella was that, um, and this is something we writers say all the time, is that is that a villain is never is usually never a villain in their own mind. They're yeah. the yeah. hero of their story. No villain ever considers it. himself a bad person. Right. But you do have some villains that do. But yeah. but if you were to ask Thanos, he's not the bad guy of the story. He's the hero, right? Yeah. And Kate Blanchett really pulled that off in in Thor Ragnarok because she shows up and goes, "Hey, we're gonna be back on top. I'm back. We get to go conquer all this stuff." And then they're like, "Hey, get back in the portal. Like you have to yeah. leave right now." And she's like, "Didn't you hear what I said?" Like she's genuinely hurt that yeah, like, she's Wait. like offended at how far the, yeah at how the, far the, they've fallen exactly <laughs> so he's like i'm gonna get my skeleton bros and we're gonna show you what real vikings are like Let's go. <laughs> she's like didn't you hear what i said like you should be like on the hype train like we should be yeah. going to do this and it was like no um now this is happening okay now i gotta kill all of you oh speaking of vikings uh assassin's creed oh valhalla oh boy Oh, Dude. so hype about that! Ridiculous hype. Odin is with us. I got like, I got like yeah. the chills. I was like, <laughs> yes, let's go. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, oh, mm. this is- oh. So, props. Talking- so yes. The other day or last night, Kenny and I were talking about um, uh, having to wear masks and stuff, like when we're out and about doing stuff. Mm-hmm. And our buddy was like, "I'll never do that." Mar. We're like, "Well, it's it's probably just going to be part of our." like our society from for like a little a, while. Yeah. yeah like mm-hmm. for the, it's going to, it's going to end up being like less. You, you know how, like here's my analogy. You know how, like when you say when someone sneezes next to you and you're supposed to say bless you or you're rude, but mm-hmm. there's like literally no reason why that should ever be considered rude, but it's just like a social, like, I don't know what the term for that would be like a social thing you do. 
Mm-hmm. It has literally no impact on it. Like on the many situations, the masks would neither, but I can see masks. We like becoming something similar and reverse is yeah. all I was saying. And so back to your point. And so like, I'm just like, well, if we're going to do it, yeah, we should, we should make it like stylish. Like we should make it part of our personnel. Like you see all these like cool futuristic things, right? Like you see like cyberpunk ghost in the show, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So like, why would you wear some like basic bitch, like cloth square over your face when you can have like a led lit up cyberpunk samurai mask. Yep. Yeah. Or show up as like scorpion. Yeah. Yeah, Or be a space (laughs) green. Yeah. Or, you know, like your space green stuff, you go like diesel punk with it, steampunk, whatever your, your bag is or whatever. So I'm like all for it. I'm like, yeah, let's Dude. go. Like, I'm, Hasp- I mean, like Hasp- he literally, we were playing a video game all together in TeamSpeak. And he just, I was like, where are you? He's like, uh, I'm looking at STL files now because apparently I can 3D print the baseline for all these masks and insert filters. And this is my new life now. Oh, you could make a shit ton of money. Dude. I know, for himself. He's just, he wants yeah. to make them so he can paint them up for himself. And like I ordered a mask. And it's FDM printed because like the part that goes like here, it's too big for my printer because I have a resin right, printer. Right, but right. there's an insert on the front that is smaller and it's supposed to pop off so you can replace the filter, right? And I'm like, well, that I can 3D print. And within like two seconds, I found one that was like a Space Marine rebreather grill. Mm-hmm. And I'm literally printing it right now. And then by the end of this conversation, our buddy who initially was like, eh. Was like posting pictures yeah, from Etsy. Yeah, at like where he's like, a.m. he was like, I found this dope like steampunk Bane mask that I'm gonna ask this guy to give me one unpainted so I can do it myself. I'm like, yep, you see, you see the point. If you're gonna go out, yeah, dude, for real. And so like, he found this one. It was ludicrous looking, and he's like, yeah, I'm just gonna do this myself. And I, I just, like, I say yes. we embrace it, and then like make it part of your personality. <laughs> like, what kind of mask you wear? Like, make it an extension of you. It was oh, <laughs> definitely. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be down for that. Totally. Wait, especially with like, like, I used, I, I love cyberpunk stuff. Going, going back a long time. I, I'm sure Mike does. And with cyberpunk 2077 coming out soon, I've been seeing a lot of this, a lot of the stuff they've been making, like on Etsy and shit. Like they have those like samurai menpo masks that are all like cyberpunked out and shit. I'm like, mm, I kind of want to buy one of those. <laughs> like those dude, are cool. Zenwu goes Watchmen IRL. I'm. Dude, I was that close to wearing my freaking Rorschach mask <laughs> to work. Oh, you geez. should. You should. Yeah. You should make a statement. You should be a trendsetter. You have yeah. the confidence to go out there. You have there. to change it like every time though. So it's like a different blob. It actually changes when you breathe. It's heat, yeah. heat reactive. Shut they have, they have masks. They have masks now with embedded LED stuff that's like sound activated. And yeah. so you can be like speaking to somebody and it's like doing all this cool shit. I'm like, yeah, we need more of that. That's cool as shit. Yes, so it's like, and you need Optimus Prime. Which mask. That's they, do. Sound they do. Sound wave. You need sound wave. I, I am, yeah. and I, I talked about it on uh, Twitch the other day. So, like, uh, Custom Inc. let me do minimum runs of masks with Heretic swag logos on them. Oh, oh. so cloth, like awesome cloth masks. So I'm gonna do a bunch and give them out to my patrons, to my swag bag, to your patrons, and uh, I think all June I'm gonna do my final four. Are all gonna get them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but with this, th- the reason this is so crazy and this came up is like, Wyatt has cool news. He gets to go oh, yeah. to the Alamo GT in 10 days. Yeah, we're actually oh, yeah. the Alamo It's happening. GT. It's happening. So uh, there, there is some restrictions um, with the way that the, the rules are right now. Um, you can only have like 50 people in the building. So they had to do like a hard cutoff on any sales. Uh, they, they stopped those and they were like, hey, if you bought a ticket, and you intend on coming, tell us. And then we can kind of figure out yeah. what we're going to do from there. And if you bought a ticket and you do not intend on coming, tell us. So they can get like a roster. And we have the roster. It's ready to go. Um, people have submitted lists. It's going to be on the 16th. Um, basically, they were like, we can't sell alcohol because of whatever dumb reason. And um, city ordinance is like, you're supposed to wear masks. Like, it's not super enforceable, but we're going to politely ask that anybody who can like bring one. And if not, we're going to be selling like super cheap, like paper masks there so that everybody can wear one, you know, and I'm fine with that. Like that's, that's like a, a concession that like nobody should be upset about. Like yeah. it's, it's fine. And, and we, get to, we get to play and, Warhammer. I'm yeah, like, and I'm so like, excited. when you go to a convention anyway, you should get in the habit of not shaking everyone's hand and hugging. Yes, exactly. That is like, I've been doing truth. this for a year. It's like, um, you got to do the, the, the bump. You put your glove out and you're like, let's do this. And then like, yep. and you, you, you roll dice. Every time I forget that. 
and I go to LVO or something and I'm just like shaking hands and everybody, I'm yeah. always sick for two weeks. Anyway. Well, yeah. And that's oh, what, man. When, when just, you go and do stuff where I'm not there, you get sick. When you do stuff and I'm there, we go through like two bottles of hand yeah. sanitizer. You, 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 you basically are like, wash your hands, you hobo. What are you doing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. See, like we did not get sick after LVO because of make me. make a big old uh, orc boss artificial yes. jaw as the mask, yes. <laughs> the, the <laughs> iron gob. I would wear the. Shit I'm out. so into this. So I have or, no. Uh, what was it? What uh, Morton Joe? That'd be tight. Oh my god! Of course, yeah, Morton Joe. Uh, oh they're out there. Oh my god, they are out there. Some really How fresh. Good would that be? That'd be super fresh, know. obviously. <laughs> I mean, a good just, one. Go to, just go to Etsy and like type it in. It's like, got to It's got That's a good one. But like, it's like crazy because it's just like we're hobbyists, kind of in the cosplay world, like a foot in anyway. Yeah. This all is fine to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I mean, I'm, I make T-shirts for every event that I go to. So right. that's like that's like the like the super vanilla side of of that spectrum. But it's like you, know, you just put like a mask on. It's like that's a little bit more. That's I can totally do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't wait to get like. um like hockey glove mods that have like, you know, disposable rubber gloves underneath them. And then I have like bolt, like brass knuckles all on them and shit. And that's like what I interact with models with. <laughs> I'm going to go all out, dude. I just, I don't know. I would not be going to it. I mean, but, you do you, bro. I, I, but I wouldn't be doing no, that. No, that's Especially why they asked. The states that's that, why they asked. Like, tell us who's not. Because they assumed like some people are going to be like not comfortable going. Some people are want to go. And they said, make your attention clear right now so we can do this. And Texas is kind of going back to an earlier point during this where – you know, they're like, no gatherings of this. This is what we want you to do. And so they're like, let's fucking well, they're, they're relaxing stuff, but they're one of the five states with the most spikes right now. I mean, so I, like, personally, I, don't know, man. I personally, you know, living with someone with a compromised immune system, uh, immune system, I wouldn't go. But if I lived all by my fucking self and I had zero, intera- like zero interactions with people all around me, like, like, hmm. well, like why? I would absolutely yeah. go. Like, like, I mean, it's a personal choice at that yeah. point, you know. And that's, I mean, people have opinions on it, and that's fine. Like, you can feel however you want to feel, but I mean, uh, like, we're doing it. Is it more dangerous than going to Walmart and Lowe's? <laughs> probably yeah, not. dude. It's let me tell you about. Way. Let me tell you about Lowe's. Like, I had to actually go to Lowe's for like legit reasons, and I roll up. The parking lot is packed. The most cars I've ever seen at Lowe's ever in the history of ever. And I'm like, oh, this can't be good. So I, I got my mask and shit. I'm not a dummy. I'm, I'm gonna wear it in there. And, 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 and I'm like, am I going to be weirdo looking? No, nah, everybody's got masks on except for the contractors. So there's a line to get in the, the, the normal side. And then the contractor gates open people just going in and out, like ain't no thing right next to each other. People in line, there's no six feet apart at the contractor side, nothing like, and I walk in with my mask on that way. Cause I'm not going to wait in line over there with all those people. And I'm like, and I just walk in, I just get, get the stuff I need, go through the self checkout and bounce out. And I'm like, but on the normal people side, the non-contractor side, there's like six feet, six feet spacing, all the normal stuff. Contractor side, it's like the wild, wild west. I couldn't believe what was going on. I couldn't believe there's that many people in there. Yeah. And I'm like, everybody is here because there's nothing to do and they need stuff. Yeah. Or contractors are still working, obviously. Yeah. But- and I mean, it's just like there's a lot of there's a lot of opinions out there that are really like narrow minded about things. And you just got to put stuff in perspective. No. What oh, yeah. in this country? No, not, not at all. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, people are like, oh, you're so dumb for uh, going to this, having this tournament. And I'm like, it's a bunch of guys that we all know. We all know each other. Like the Texas circuit with like, there are some randos, but I know every single person on this roster for years. And I know that every single one of them is not dumb enough to like come to this thing if they've been exposed. And they're also the type of people that you know are like, yeah, these guys are showering. They're washing sure. their hands. Like, but you don't know. Like, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be straight with you. Right. I'm wearing I'm wearing a mask, not because I think I might get it. Although, you know, if somebody sneezes in close proximity, that's an issue. I'm basically doing it because I feel like I'm the guy that would have it and just be throwing it out there and not know. Right. And I don't want that on me. It just depends. It just it really depends on like like I feel like your if you're interactions. So, yeah, I feel like if you're someone like time. Wyatt or me, like I haven't left this fucking house to interact with another human in a long time. Yeah. I don't have it. Period. True. Like yeah. I've been here since uh what was your birthday? February twenty fourth? Yep. I've been here since February twenty fourth. <laughs> I don't have it. And I'm I'm and basically if, the same it, thing. Like I've only if I lived I here by myself, my I would go to I, fucking, go, I would go and come yeah, back. Yeah, like I've I've gone to the, the the like my mailbox and I've gone to like the gas station like twice. In like over a month, 
And I've had like no human interaction yeah. other than that. And it's like, I didn't touch anybody. And like when I went to the gas station to get like some energy drinks and a snack and stuff, I was like hand sanitizer, like five yep. fucking times in that one thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, but, I mean, yeah, but I agree with, I agree with you. Like basically I just care about people around me. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like I just can't. I mean, it's it. it's a it's a complicated complicated situation. But also, right? you know, like and realistically, the only thing that's really changed right now is like we're getting tired of this. People are getting fucking tired, bro. I, it's I really hard. Point. It's sure. really hard to like volunteer into this when like people are are fucked right now, man. Like so many yeah. people, like so many of our like you know hobby shops. I remember like week one we were talking about it. Like yo, all this, you know how many hobby shops still like the first week we're like never open it again. That was yeah. months ago. Done. Yeah, that still happened. Yeah. You know, that was months yeah. ago. And that, now, it's, now it's happening to, to businesses like yeah. Yeah. like Golden, Golden Corral here in town. Like, not that I go to Golden Corral because they got the glutens. Uh, they have that is a not gluten, that is not a, a, a robbery. Right. No, that's so, not like, a I haven't gone there in years, but I know I know it's a popular place in town. You know what I'm saying? They're like straight up on Facebook, like, "Hey, we're selling our plates. We're not reopening." And I'm like, "Ooh, that's not yeah. good." Uh, yeah, there's I went lots to of places. Beamer's Haven today and dropped coin on. A bunch of crap that is probably going to find its way back to Gamers Haven during the store auction. During your auction. Like three Titanicus. years from now when I go, oh, I never played this. What is this garbage? Titanicus? I don't remember. This garbage. <laughs> I'm, yeah. joking, your mouth. I'm joking. I'm joking. I mean, yeah. And so it's it's like it's, we're still, I mean, that's a great point. We're still in that place, guys, where if like you yeah. do have a local hobby shop that is doing curbside pickup or doing some online thing. I should like support them. We're still in that mindset. We still got, we can't like. Not, nothing has changed except we're getting more tired. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's still just yeah. as bad for those guys. And like when we come out of this, there's going to be a lot of changes socially that are unpredictable. There's going to be – only thing you can predict is like things are going to be weird and different for a while. Yeah. Like at the end of the – like eventually it's just going to get to a point where like we as a nation, like we simply can't afford to keep doing this. Like it's oh, just going to – It's going like, to – the noose is going to get tighter for sure. And I know a lot of businesses are hurting just because – you know, okay, they, I'm I'm gonna add more gloom and doom. Uh oh, wait till the food shortages hit. Right, it's already started. I mean, like yeah. right now, Wendy's like, doesn't have burgers. Yeah, so like I just I got groceries Oof. the other day because like we've reopened enough to a point here where like there's a a large amount of people who were getting delivery groceries who are no longer having to do that. So mm. now I can get groceries whenever I want, like I used to. And so like now I'm I'm back on the keto diet. Whereas for like the month of April, I wasn't able to do that because like getting fresh produce was just not an option, right? Like you could not rely on being able to get groceries when you needed it to. Now that we can, I learned that they have restrictions on how much meat you can buy because they are trying to play catch up because for so like just for like a couple of weeks, these like meat processing plants all across the country were closed Mm -hmm. And just that disrupted the supply lines to the point where we're having meat shortages. And then like, mm -hmm. because some of them are still closed, there's these people all over the country that are like beef suppliers, pork suppliers, poultry suppliers that are just having like to dead loss their entire like year of livestock because nobody can take it and yep. they cannot afford to feed and house and take care of animals past the point of like sending them to the meat processing industry. Like they just can't do it. Like their, their entire livelihood and industry is not based on that. Like, a, you know, a simple rancher that has like a couple of cows or something, right? Like when you have like 1800 pigs and you have to send them to market after they mature enough to go to the meat processing plant, like that's not in your business model to like feed all those fuckers for like the next six, eight months. It nope. doesn't happen. So you have to kill them. And <laughs> you saw Kara Quinn's comment, Mike. I did. <laughs> Kara Quinn said, then the murder hornets kill all the bees and we're off. Dude, murder hornets too. Just when you thought 2020 can get any worse. Oh, man. Did you did you post that one, Haspel, where it was like they found the sarcophaguses in Egypt and, the, and it's like, don't open those shits. The time's uh, not yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not worried. We still have probably like four or five plagues to go before the shit really hits the fan. <laughs> We've got murder hornets now. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we got the locusts. We got the plague. We don't have, we have, it's not raining famine. frogs. Well, I it's guess, not I guess ice on fire famine, yet. Right? Huh? Well, we do have a famine and then we got murder hornets. So, but we still have like frozen ice fire needs to come. 
and then all the firstborn. That's the same yeah, topic. Ironically, the uh, gas <laughs> is plentiful and cheap. So, <laughs> are we? Are we, I mean, like, is it going to be Mad Max soon? Like, do we? Do we need to get like some old football pads and assless chaps and like start roaming the highways? Like, I'm ready for this. What, yeah, what yeah. do you mean? What do you mean? Should we <laughs> get you? them? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've been wearing that shit to work for like a year. Yeah, I mean, you've got you've got your speedo and hockey mask ready to go. Like, <laughs> wow, that explains so much I'll about your, your work life. Um, um, also, interesting news for uh, bringing it back to forty k. Our new thing now, Haspel, is we only do this one show. We don't do both shows. Oh, oh, I got stuff to talk about then. And so this, well, I, we got, to, I, I, I mean, I we, got the scoop. I we got actually for us this week. He, actually, he, yeah, he's got scoop. Yeah, we have the fucking scoop. And it's I was boots on the ground doing journalism. Yeah, yeah let me. Uh, okay, careful. Okay, don't, don't be oh. careful with those journalism oh. claims. Oh. Anyways, um, Rob, yours me, is at, yours but, is at the Rob, end. Let's be real. Right we now, do, the bar is so low. So low. what I did today is in fact journalism. Yeah. La- the latest, uh, latest best comment on Spiky Bits Facebook. Uh, Spiky Bits, your your webcasts are great. Your website, not so much. I'm like, <laughs> oh. Sucks. I'm like it, it's not my webcast, but okay. We'll, we'll still do we'll still do our intros okay. and everything like we do, like at oh, the end, right. and I'll splice it together, and we'll leave with a tabletop marketplace, okay. like we do. I don't have much, but but it's cool because Wyatt is gonna lead us in a discussion about the fucking scoop right now. It's yeah, it's it amazing. Cool. So here's uh, Wyatt's the current meta of COVID 40k. Oh, so we're gonna do this before we do intros and stuff. Yeah. This is- oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. So a um, lot of people can't play Warhammer right now. Like, so the meta is dead. Long live the meta. COVID killed the meta. Like, what's happening? Nobody knows, right? <laughs> um, also, this is a question that many people have asked. Like, well, I want to play Warhammer, but I can't travel to events. Like, it's expensive. You have to get hotel rooms. You have to get flights. Blah, blah, blah. I can't do that. Or alternatively, what if you're one of those people? It's like, well, in my area, nobody plays Warhammer. Like, I can't get games, but I want to play, right? Well, this is the answer. There is a uh, brand organization called Tactical Tortoise. Uh, They're on YouTube, and they're also on Facebook. And what they have been doing over the past handful of weeks is a seasonal league online using Tabletop Simulator. It's called T5S2. Tabletop Tortoise, Tabletop uh, Simulator Tournament Series. So like five five T's, two S's, right? The way this works is you schedule a, an event with your opponent every week. You guys play a game. Um, everybody plays one game a week, and then it resets into the next week. Every uh, heat or pod, they're calling them pods, is a 16-man, four-round tournament where you are vying for points. And then at the end of the season, there is an invitational and it works similar to ITC points where um, you take your best scores, your best uh, values of points over three pods, add those together and the players are ranked in a list. And uh, however many people at the top of that ranking list are then invited to this invitational. And you guys have heard me talk about this before. This is a format that I really, really am excited about. It is a single elimination seated bracket tournament and whoever wins that will be crowned the king of t5s2 for this season the 2020 season and this is all done online on tabletop simulator and it's really really cool um over on their youtube channel they have live battle reports they've streamed a lot of these games they have all the replays up and the production value is actually really good um and I came, I interviewed uh, Trevi, who's the guy who runs uh, Tabletop Tortoise today, or Tactical Tortoise, excuse me. Um, and I know that I and Kenny have met them before, but I don't know if Rob has. So, like, Trevi is also involved in Breach Storm, which is a really cool indie tabletop oh, game. Then I know who he is. Yeah, exactly. Like, I've painted the miniatures on my stream before. Breach Storm is a really cool IP. Uh, and this is, this is what he's doing now. So, um, lots of really big players are in this right huh. now. Like I've been talking to uh, Don Hoosen that's playing in pod two, as well as uh, our mutual friend, uh, Kenny and I, uh, PJ Pants. Alan PJ also- Pants is in it. Yep, <laughs> he's been playing. Uh, I actually saw his live cast with uh, Brad Chester and a couple of other guys for Gentleman Gaming the other day. And um, it's really cool because like 
now is this time where there is no meta. So people can bring whatever they want. And for the first time in a long time, like all those ideas that you've had, like, ooh, I want to try this list build, but I got to, I got to like source like all these models. I got to nine rhinos. Uh, you know, yeah, like, <laughs> oh man, I want to try this, but I got to track down like 16 plague Marines, you know, um, that doesn't matter. Cause you can just like grab up all these models and do any list that you want to do. And so we're seeing like some really wild stuff and it's sort of the wild west right now. And let's see. So we were, I was looking at it earlier and I mean like, okay, so give me, I want to, I want to hear you guys predictions. Like who do you think the top three is right now in pod one? So this is the, uh, they're, they're doing the fourth round right now. So like the finals are going on throughout this week. Um, it's like everyone playing is all my big names playing or. Well, okay, so this is where it kind of gets. Or are you asking me what I think the factions are? Factions, give me the factions. Oh, factions. Think it's top three right now. Okay, so it's based on like I'm not going to try to meta your answer in any way. I'm going to just say <laughs> space marines, space marines, space marines. You're third right. But space, space marines, space marine, chaos, it's a, Eldar. It's a it's a space marine faction that you may not anticipate. Three knights. They're in second place right now. Booyah. <laughs> My boys are good at something only when there's a plague. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Grey Knights are in a good, really good place right now. Mm-hmm. So yeah. can't, can't so bitch our, our top three right now, we have a, a Tau Empire player who is tied for first place with um, Grey Knights. Like the, They have the same record, but their, their points differential is like 10 points different. It's where the, the Tau player is like edging them out with like 10 points. And then beyond that, in third place is Adeptus Astartes, but it's Raptors. So it's not mm. Iron Hands, it's not Imperial Fist, it's not Ultramarines, it's not Raven Guard, not White Scars, it's Raptors. But don't Raptors count as Raven? No, because it's successor. He's, he's no, there's one that's pigeonholed in that it has to be something. Which one is Which one is it? I forget, but this guy's list is Raptors. Like he's using um, Hungry for Battle and Long Range Marksman with the Raptors keyword. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Don who's an out there play t- playing his eight right. Oh, this list. list is wild. Like this is a list we have not seen in many years. It's, it's eight rhinos with plague Marines inside and like a demon prince in the tally man. Like it's insane. <laughs> yeah. Like it's going to be wily. You're the meta. This is going to be something we get to follow. We get to now, uh, Go have a conversation, get the schedule, figure out the hype matches of the week, and we get to talk about the outcomes. Yeah, this is like this is what we needed. This and is this so is cool. this is like the the segment, the homebrews this week segment that you that we were doing. This is the you know who won what big event this week's. This is have you heard of? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think I think this will be big. You know, because we. Traditionally, some of our bigger posts on the site are the homebrews and the, you know, who what was good over the weekend because a lot of folks don't want to drill into it. And it's very top level. It's not inside baseball, but folks really like to see the list, see the, you know, just quick commentary on it and yeah. and, and kind of have it all in one place. So I'm almost wondering if this is going to turn into something for maybe when folks can't get to a, uh, a big tournament or something. Yeah, because this is a this is a worldwide event. Like this is a true international event mm-hmm. where all and so for anybody who's who's wondering, I just posted a YouTube link in the super chat, so everybody on YouTube and Twitch can get in that. That is the format video of how this tournament works. Um, it's really short, easy to listen to, and within that is a link to the discord, which is how you can join this because they start a new pod every, week. every two to three weeks. Right. And, um, you can, you can get in on this, right. And the community is also great. So if you've just been hmm. like languishing at home, not able to talk 40 K with people and not be able to like bounce list ideas off of people like, Oh, what are people playing right now? I wonder if this, you also is, have a like, casuals you know, league. Yeah, exactly. So he just told me today when I interviewed him that, um, they are doing a event like I think he said like every Friday where um, if you're new to 40k if you're new to competitive 40k if you don't know how to use tabletop sim all that good 
like you can jump into the discord and get in on this where they will help you get into this community. And I would definitely say uh, TTS is a great program, but it, it's a million times more helpful if you have somebody, a guide, you know, oh, just for a sure. guide to help for you. Sure. Because um, it, it will take a guide maybe 30 minutes to show you all the ins and outs and the shortcuts and the, the kind of hacks to, to get things to work and move the way you want them to. Yeah, uh, that's as why opposed to um, like two hours on your own. That's why what this community is doing is really great because it's just like everybody's welcome. And the thing is, like they, they talked about this the other day when um when PJ Pants and Brad Chester were doing their little broadcast, is like there is an undeniable amount of jank that comes along with TTS. Like there just is. Like playing this game mm-hmm. on TTS, there is there's no way to avoid it. It's just there, it's gonna happen. Like down to the most minute things, like moving your models around. There's a little bit of jank to it, right? You got to get over it. But the people that are competing in this uh, Mm. T5S2 uh, season and the people that are part of this community are the people that you want to play with because they understand that playing this way is 110% about sportsmanship and 110% about intent. So this could possibly be like the best experience playing 40K with a, uh, another individual in a competitive setting that you could ever have because there is no way that you're going to meet that guy. Like there are no that guys in this league. Yeah. It's not it's gonna just, happen. As, as good as Tabletop Simulator is and as precise as it can be, just the act like what Wyatt was talking about of moving your model, right? And it's like, well, was that exactly six inches or was it 6.1 Yeah, or 5.8 well, or whatever? The, the, the cool thing is when you do pick up a model in TTS using the ruler tool, it will tell you with a numerical readout yeah. exactly how far it's moved. The jank comes into like where exactly was your mouse placed when you clicked on that model to pick it up? Because mm-hmm. it will measure from wherever that pixel yeah. back of in the base, center of the base, off to the left. Yeah. Did, exactly. Yeah. 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 It doesn't have a it doesn't have a hitbox that like just knows it's you know, a forty millimeter base. You know, so yeah, yeah. that's yeah. where the intent comes into play. You know what I mean? Like where, the, you know, so right, right. So it's it's really simple. It's like if you if you like I can move seven inches every time, right? And you're moving seven, 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 and you know that it's like okay, well, I can move here. And then, like, the game is going to say if we measure, it's like an 8-inch charge. But you and I both know that technically it's like a 10-inch charge. So that, that's where intent and sportsmanship comes into play. And it's all, it's all like, you know, aces. Like, everybody yeah. is a class actor. If we're 24 inches apart and I move this far, we know. Like, and that's where you got to have to help guide each other, help each other. And this league is going to be huge because mm-hmm. it's going to... Give us something to talk about. New metal lists are going to be available because people aren't held back by their model collections. This is kind of what I was talking about before. I think my prediction is the meta is going to have a lot more cool hammer in it when we get out of COVID. There's going to be a lot of people bringing stuff and units and elements that they've always wanted to bring, but like they surfed the, that tournament scene so hard and who has time to build every model. So it's like, yeah. I'm going to default back to this meta shit. Oh, it's like, it's hard. Big people like Don, like he's, let's say he wins this joint. Like what's going to stop him from doing is he, now he might actually build and hobby crack on the OG death guard mobile list from the past. Like he might do it. Something that he wouldn't have actually ever physically done before. He might do it. You know, I've always had this list where I had like all these theories, like max fear, chaos, demon theories. I had a couple of lists where I was I was kicking them around. I was like, I'm not gonna fucking do that list. And I'm like, I'm absolutely gonna play test that list in fucking tabletop simulator. Yeah. <laughs> like because you can't, like, you know, like I was I was just uh picking up some additions to my chaos army over the past couple of days because like we're getting to a point in my region where we can start playing 40k again. So like and it is back to that thing where it's like, ah, well, I kind of want to do this, but that means I have to find like I have to find seven plague marines. One of which is has to have a special weapon that can only come in like one of two boxes. You got to track that. Oh, the flail thing. thing? Uh, well, the flail and the um, uh, what's the little grenade launcher they have? Oh, the blight launcher. So the blight launcher. The flail actually they have a they have a single guy with the flail from the Heroes Three yes. for Death Guard. Yes. So that's another way to get. Oh, I'm I'm aware. I got some. Oh, okay. Um, but I also needed a rhino. And something else I wanted to try out is a land raider. 
And that might be funny because I know some longtime listeners know that like anytime somebody asks me, oh, well, what about, what do you think about Land Raiders? Should I, should I run a Land Raider? I'm like, nah, they're dog shit. Don't even do it. They're dog shit. I'm going to run a Land Raider because like in this context, there is a, there is um, the ability to put things on the table that just simply did not work before because there is no meta, right? Like if I had brought a Land Raider to LVO this year, it would have been dead weight, right? Yeah. It's a waste of almost 300 points. Like it's just not gonna, like don't even the- bother putting it on the table. But now, now that we can do whatever we want because there everything is unexpected, you know? I'm like, I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna put a Land Raider on the table. And I'm actually really excited for this because something I've always wanted is an OG Land Raider, an original second edition Land Raider. And I found one on eBay for a reasonable price And it's in pretty good shape. So I'm going to be doing like a, uh, you know, like a, like a, this old car, pit my ride, (laughs) you know, uh, chip foos from the, from the chassis up refurbish on this Land Raider from, you know, 1984 or whatever, whenever they first came out. Right. Um, just to put it on the table and like try some new stuff. It's going to be fun. I think that's, I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, I would, uh, Metas do tend to settle, settle down now. So maybe like six months from, or four months from now, it'll all kind of settle. Hey, it'll go back to the way it was before. All right. I have no, I'm not so, like, I don't think this is right. a permanent thing. It's just like, it's going to be no, no, interesting no. for at least a while. Let's, let's mm. realistically think about this. Metas are set by the 1% of bleeding edge tournament winning lists. Huh? There are no tournaments right now. No. Right. And even in these pods, you have to think of each of these pods as like a 16 man tournament. Right. And so what one person wins pod one with has absolutely no impact on pod two because it's already started before the first one begins. So unless you're in pod like 15, there's really no way to predict what people are playing. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, because nobody has any man hour investment in what units they need to bring. It shifts instantly. And no monetary investment in what units they need to bring. It could be literally anything. And so until we start getting to a point where we're having like GT after GT after GT in the real world, probably after this summer, like who's to say what the meta is? There is no meta. It could be anything. Um, I like this. I like this because it's got potential to bring more people into the hobby through getting introduced this way from like maybe like the video games or something. And then maybe going into the actual like physical hobby of it. Because when I was talking to a lot of those 3d makers, I didn't realize that a lot of them did not come from the hobby and then go into 3d modeling and making, they actually had a background in 3d modeling and making, and then discovered that there's dope ass dreadnoughts and there's dope ass models through video games. And they're like, yo, wait, these are models? Like, you can play a game with these? I can make this. This is what I do. Yeah. I make these things. I mean, and show then, hands in the chat. Who got into 40K because of Dawn of War? Probably a lot of people. Or who, who got into 40K because of a Dreadnought? Or, the Dawn of you know, War. The Land Dawn of War 2 cut, cinema cutscenes are the most hype yeah. fucking yeah. shit to date, son. The <laughs> first one was pretty good, too. They like, spent, like... Or pride, whisper me. I, I definitely want one, even though I already bought one. If you're willing to give it. <laughs> I'm going to need infinite. Definitely there's send like, me that. There's like yeah. nine Land Raider variants in there. I, I think seven or nine. I forget exactly. But a lot. either way, they're all dope. Every single one of them. Look, look the freshest shit. Got to collect them all, dog. Got to get them all. Yeah, got to get them all. <laughs> got to all. be fun, the fun trivia. Best. Where did the Land Raider come from? M- Mr. Well, Raider. It was, it was originally called oh. Land's Raider. Well, yeah, because yeah. Arcan Land was the guy who discovered the uh, template. Yeah, it predates forty k. Oh, oh, it's uh, it's uh, two thousand AD, right? It is two thousand AD. It is the vehicle that Judge Dredd takes mm. from Mega City Suck One my to dick. Mega I'm City the biggest nerd out of everybody. Crap, <laughs> than anybody else across the the uh, ruined uh, the ruined Earth. That's you mean, that's what he does. He takes oh yeah, it's ruined. It wasn't scorched Earth. Yeah. That's true. You mean they, you mean GW got inspiration from a lot of different fucking things? Fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah, and then with the Dawn of War stuff, I I always thought. Remember when uh, Tim was still playing? 
um, we were talking about how at dawn of when dawn of war came out and this is going way back where you could still buy computer games at Best Buy. Whoa. Right. <laughs> I remember in the cardboard boxes. Yep. In the cardboard the box. little flippy back and you can see all the great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we were saying that GW kind of left some money on the table because what they should have done was had like different characters from that video. Oh game. yeah. Minis. In, it, it, it minis in the yeah, boxes and maybe not for Dawn of War. Cause no do, one knew it was going to be a huge hit. Like but for right. Dawn of War too. That just this last year, we finally got a miniature of Gabriel Angelos. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah, and it sucked. Yeah, it was terrible. Uh, shout out to Artel for, for making the good one. Version. Yeah. Well, they all of them broke. Did they ship out from Forge World? They all broke. What? Like the Iron Halo? Yeah. I mean, the Iron they Halo. don't have quality control in Forge World? No. Well, no. They, they came out so. okay, but then the shipping was no, they terrible. Didn't. Don't tell me they came out of those molds okay. You know they were dog shit. I ship large pewter Mantic models without even pinning, pr- without them breaking when I when I saw oh, them. Did you see Mantic did uh they have the complete like how to play Kings of War? I did on see that, yes. Tabletop simulator. I did not. I need to go see that. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I think it's, I think the link's in our chat on Facebook. Check it out. Mm-hmm. But look, let's um let's uh skitter off to the end so then we can do the beginning. Skitter. If you're if you're listening to this, you may you may hear some things in this podcast that don't make sense to you. Yo, get over it. COVID nineteen we'll crisis podcast. <laughs> <Get over. laughs> We're actually fine. It's the problems with you. Yeah. <laughs> so Thanks. I'll let uh, the ship's computer walk us out. Aspel, take us out of here. Hold the line. Stay with me. If you find yourself in the green fields with the sun on your face, do not be troubled. For you are in Elysium and you're already dead. <laughs>